Marhaba and welcome to Your Property Pulse, Knight Frank's dedicated real estate podcast for the Middle East. I'm your host, Faisal, partner and head of Middle East Research. In today's episode, we're going to examine Saudi Arabia's booming residential sector to get a better understanding of what's driving growth across the kingdom. The guests on the show today include Harman, who heads up our real estate strategy and consulting team in Saudi Arabia, Steve, our head of valuation and advisory, and Talal, a partner in our valuation and advisory team based in Riyadh. Thank you, gents, for joining us today. So while property markets in the region begin to dust themselves off following the sudden jolt to the global economy resulting from the pandemic, the residential market in Saudi Arabia appears to have experienced a very limited impact. Of course, the kingdom's Vision 2030 has a large part to play in this resilience, particularly as providing and improving residential accommodation across Saudi is such a central pillar to His Highness Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's vision. So home ownership, rates and residential values are now on the rise as mega projects begin to take shape across the country. So what can we expect next? Harman, perhaps we can go to you first. Um, Can you tell us how you see the residential market in Saudi Arabia at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, if you think ago uh, back a few a couple of years, uh, I think the uh, the market was quite sluggish. Yeah, the residential prices were we're not really increasing or at some point decreasing. Uh, I think that uh, over the last 12 months that has changed. I mean, I think I, I read your report uh, just last month, I think, and uh, prices have actually exceeded uh, price inflation. Yeah, price inflation levels, uh, residential rates have 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 uh, have risen more. So that's I think is uh, that's at least as a as an investor in real estate, be it your own home. Uh, that's the least thing you would expect real estate to do, right? An inflation hedge. So that is that is really promising. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think when it comes to affordability, uh, that that is still some progress to be made, right? Because I think uh, on a national scale, um, it still requires on average six times an annual household salary to buy a home yeah, on average. And I think in, in Jeddah, that's even 12 times if it involves a villa. So you know, I, th- I think it's 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 part of being in a in an emerging market, uh, but it's moving into I think the right direction. Um, last time I mentioned to you, Faisal, that I've seen that the private sector is now also getting more and more active, whereas uh, the last couple of years they were more sitting on their hands, waiting for uh, for the Saudi government and and the PIF entities what their moves were and how serious they were. But now. Uh, at, at least what I see um, in terms of inquiries coming in, uh, yeah, the, the, the private sector is now also uh, looking to, to participate in, on, on a grander scale. That's really interesting, Harman. Some, uh, some co- uh, very valid points there around affordability and participation of the, uh, the private sector. Um, what about you, uh, Steve and Talal? What, what's your take on the state of the residential market from a mortgage and valuation perspective, perhaps? Yeah, thanks, Faisal. So, uh, maybe, maybe I'll just jump in first, Talal, just to give my sort of view on things. I, look, I think I think um, generally in the kingdom at the moment, the uh, business confidence is is high. Um, there's lots of initiatives from government, um, diversification of the economy, uh, and 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 Talal will know a lot about that from his time at the Tourism Development Fund. You know, big pushes on tourism. And, and diversification um, in a slightly different way to the, the, the rest of the GCC, but they are you know encouraging business. Uh, the market sentiment is very positive with all the initiatives that are you know driven by 2030. Um, I think I think Saudi's dealing with COVID very well. They've got less than a thousand cases a day as we speak, um, probably into the low hundreds. Um, so I think they've dealt with that well. Um, and I think you know if you look at, at the reports that, that, that you've published, Faisal, on in terms of, of the of the market, um, I think some of the takeaways from that that I that I saw were the you know the apartment prices were 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 sort of showing really positive growth across the country. Um, I think the you know the, the general um, sort of movement or the or the the, the, the trend is is to 
uh, centralise a lot of business and uh, government and activities in Riyadh. So there's huge hash building uh, programmes taking place. Um, you know, you know, housing has been unaffordable for a lot of Saudis historically, but there's a number of initiatives that are um, helping to rebalance that, I think. And um, you've got things like the Saudi refinance company um, injecting liquidity uh, into the market so that there's more, more, more cash available for mortgages. Um, I think in recent times we've seen that the loan to value um, increase from 85% to 90%. So people have to put less down to take a, uh, to, take a uh, to buy a house. Um, we've seen things like you know, VAT was brought in uh, up to 15% fairly recently, but that was real estate transactions were then uh, exempted from that, but a, a real estate transaction tax was brought in at 5%. So effectively that that's helped to the tune of 10% on, 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 on real estate deals. Um, and I think uh, there's provisions as well for um, first, first time homeowners um, for, um, for sort of uh, acquisitions under a million, million reals as well. So there's, there's a number of initiatives that are helping to drive that growth in transactions because of uh, better availability in mortgages. Um, and you know the surveys that that Knight Frank have done over the last few years show that there is appetite for ownership, um, but affordability has been a key a key issue. Um, I mean, Talal, uh, you're obviously a, a a young Saudi and 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 would would be in, would fall into this bracket of you know um, Saudis looking to to buy a home if you don't already have one. I mean, what's your sort of take on um, how? How, e how much easier or, or, or able is it now for the Saudi nationals to, 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 to access finance and buy a home? Well, um, as you were just mentioning, Steve, um, home, ownerships, home ownership levels has been increasing. Um, so four years ago, they stood at 47%. Today, it's standing at 60%. Um, this is thanks to many initiatives, really. Uh, one of them is the, uh, you know, the ease of obtaining finance uh, in today's world. So just in 2019 there were around 198 billion real worth of individual mortgages in 2020 it rose to 315 billion so that's a significant increase over one year that shows um, the accessibility of finance really. that is accompanied by um, an increase in prices definitely especially if you look in a city like Riyadh, where uh, people are coming from all over the kingdom to resettle in, in Riyadh. This is also one thing that, um, you know, uh, Riyadh has it in its strategy. So you'd expect demand to grow uh, stronger uh, in Riyadh compared to other uh, cities of the kingdom. So, so this is generally, you know, the sort of take I have on uh, on this. So Talal, what I would, uh, I actually through our project that we've done uh, with some of the gigas, I've seen uh, a number of uh, consumer research studies, yeah? Uh, and of course, now Frank has has also commissioned uh, com consumer research studies. And I think uh, what I understand is that previously uh, for the Saudis, for the Saudi family, the life always took place within the confines of the walls around built around the house. Right. So you have the, the homes with the small windows and there's the, 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 the garden around it, but it's all within the walls. And what happened outside the wall was you know, uh, they didn't really care much, you know, it, 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 you know, whether there was a park or whether there was an, a, a school nearby, right? that was secondary. Whereas I, I think now, and I hope that, that that's the case, uh, that, that there's a, a paradigm shift in that um, a Saudi families now also starting to acknowledge the value of, uh, of living, of, of community living, right? With a uh, focus on public realm, uh, and, um, a nice place to live, uh, close to shopping, uh, close to uh, education and healthcare facilities. Um, now, I, I would like to understand from you: is is that really changing? Is is, is that? I mean, I know um, uh, privacy is still important, of course, but but uh, you know, it, it's probably uh, the Saudis are more interested now also that they're also living in in a nice community. <laughs> Yeah, perhaps privacy is a nice point to start at. Um, if you look at the, uh, the recent uh, the Raya code that was issued, 
um, there has been some changes really. Uh, defense, uh, you know, there are some regulations or requirements even in defenses. So now even the uh, the construction codes or the building codes, sorry, uh, appear to be more, uh, you know, more looking to having a, an open society really, rather than uh, having privacy at its center without really compromising on what real privacy people need uh, in their homes. So this is one thing to, to look at. The other thing really is the, the communities. Uh, previously, the sort of real estate development, the residential real estate development was a matter of just developing boxes, uh, more or less. Uh, you're developing houses uh, just to live in, uh, and that's it. Today, the focus is on community development. So you have Roshan, for example, uh, where they're rolling out uh, a massive amount of units uh, across the kingdom. Um, they're piloting it in Riyadh, and pre-sales should be starting soon. So this is another thing where Roshan really focused on the community um, rather than just the units itself. So the unit would would have, um, you know, uh, the unit would be appropriate, uh, would be built to the right standard, but in the same time you will have access to facilities available. Uh, in the surrounding community. Okay, um, so so we've we've sort of talked about where the market is at the moment, um, but let's look a little bit further ahead um, to the impact of, of Vision 2030 and and what sort of impact this is having on the uh, on the residential landscape. Uh, Harman, I know you touched on uh, just there some of the work that you you and your team are doing, but you are undertaking a lot of projects um, uh, that that stem from this spectacular new vision for for Saudi. So, so perhaps you could start us off by giving us your your take on how uh, His Highness's vision is changing the residential landscape. Yeah, I I think um, what what Talal just mentioned on 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 community living, you know, it 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 it's being adopted by all the big P, PIF projects. Yeah, so uh, talk, whether that's the Ria Gate or 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 uh, Kadia. Uh, even the projects on the on, on the west coast, uh, the Red Sea coast, uh, they're all taking that into account, and and that will have an, uh, an, an uh, a, a big impact on on the overall real estate industry. Yeah. So um, previously, a real estate developer would come in, um, build a couple of homes, and 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 sort of that is it. And 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 now because of the size of these projects are much bigger. Uh, developers are looking at something that is called master development delivery model. So uh, being a real master developer is not necessarily building out the whole project yourself. It's it's not like that. And uh, I mean, we, we know that uh, from from uh, the, the UAE that were, have been quite successful in, in, in exploring that 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 development model. Um, but it's more about now and you see that in Saudi Arabia is putting all the the infrastructure in place making sure that the, the, the community element is there, uh, the public realm elements. Um, yes, maybe uh, initiate a few anchor projects that, 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 you know, that really put the, the project on the map. But then really uh, it is about engaging with, with sub-developers and, 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 and let them participate in it. And then this is, of course, uh, uh, the role of the private sector, uh, which is important under the, the Vision 2030 plan of His Highness. Um, so yeah, that that is an I think a major change, and uh, and 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 the private sector is is going to be very important in that because they will have to share that development risk and 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 invest in these projects. So that's that's a really good point. So clearly, the the main thrust of Vision 2030 is coming in the form of government-led developments and giga projects. But you you've mentioned there the private sector. So how has the private sector actually responded and? What level of activity are we seeing from this all important part of the economy? Well, I mean, when it comes to the private sector uh, involvement, I mean, what I have seen so far uh, is more like it, it's not necessarily related to these giga projects because a lot of the giga projects are not ready yet to deal with uh, sub developers. Uh, in order to do that, the, the, you know, the, 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 there must be a proper regulation in place. Uh, and um, the Riyadh. Uh, municipality, uh, I, I don't think there is a uh, provision for that 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 stipulates how a master developer uh, has to deal with 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 a with a sub developer. You know, it 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 it's 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 really uh, a lot of legal considerations are 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 are, are, are there as well. The like community uh, declaration. I mean, it's not really my expertise, but um, 
So I, I, I think what, what they need to do, all, all, all of these giga projects, they're, they're looking to have to, to build that, that, that authority in-house yeah? so, so, so that they, they have the regulations uh, in place to be able to, 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 to deal with sub-developers. And that's currently happening, but, but I don't think they're at the stage that, that they can just um, you know, uh, yeah, deal with, with sub-developers at the moment. Okay. Um, so I think you know it's fair to say, based on what you've all said so far, the residential market is indeed booming and and prices are rising. But I guess you know there's there's probably questions around whether there is a risk of the market overheating. Um, you know, are there any unforeseen changes to the status quo as a result of the amount of energy and activity in the uh, in the residential market? Um, Steve, perhaps we can we can start with you. You know, what what does all of this activity mean for mortgage lending and values? Do you think? Well, you know, in, in, in Division 2030, there's, there's very big plans. Let's say, let's take Riyadh as an example. Um, I believe the population of Riyadh is, is around 6.8 million now. Um, and under Vision 2030, they want to grow the population of Riyadh to between 15 and 20 million by uh, 2030. So that's sort of nine years away. Um, that's more, more than doubling the current population. So, so clearly, there's going to have to be a huge house building program to, to accommodate that population growth. So it can't just be done by public or just by private sector. So, um, you know, in terms of, you know, if you're talking values, then look, traditionally, there's not been a lot of, of real value added in the existing communities. You've had, you've had um, developers do uh, do a, a land subdivision and then sell off plots to 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 homeowners and they build their own house. It's very sporadic, very piecemeal, and and there's not a lot of value creation. So I think, as Harman alluded to, there's now you know there's there's a movement towards um, you know master development communities with with those facilities, public realm, um, but also on affordability. That traditional model of a, a very very large Saudi house with with the walls around it. Where different generations of the family may may live, I think that's changing. We're getting we're getting moving more towards townhouses, um, smaller villas, having you know very due regard to affordability. Um, and again, that's where the mortgage thing plays plays in. Um, so you know the the, the the there's there's numerous you know drivers, um, but I think you know. Why are prices going up now is is going to be is going to be very linked to, to population growth. Uh, certainly for places like Riyadh, I think it's probably fair to say that you've seen that that the house price growth there, um, you know, at, at a much steeper upward curve than than Eastern Province or Jeddah. Um, and I think a lot of that is also down to the quality of the available stock. You know, if you look at let's say take apartment um, take apartment buildings in um, in uh, Jeddah, you know, we, we we looked at some new developments that that really uh, done by some Jeddah-based family groups, which were, were a real game changer for the market. Um, and you know, really, you know, the, the existing stock there's there's nothing nothing available. So I think it's 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 a combination of a few things: big population growth, uh, more availability of finance. Um, there's there's not a lot of you know the existing stock has been a bit substandard or not really fit for the purpose or affordable. Um, and, and so, you know, as as more communities, which have, you know, the model of which has been done, you know, in places like Dubai and Abu Dhabi very well, you know, the, the Saudi population see this, they want, they want you know, all the positives uh, um, and the amenities from that. You know, I think, you know, I've got to be careful, but I think it's going to be driven a lot by population growth rather than speculation. Okay, so so evidently there are a number of complex and interlocking factors at play. You know, we've got the potential for the emergence of a two-tiered market driven by the type of product available. Uh, we've got you know potential affordability issues coming further down the line with um, accelerating mortgage multipliers. Um, but you know, are, are there are there any examples of buildings or developments that are doing well that that sort of stand out in your minds? Um, you know, which of the mega projects do we think? Are going to perform the best uh, in the future, given the given the evolving circumstances in the market. 
Um, Talal, I don't know if you, you want to start us off with that. Well, um, in all honesty, um, me as a Saudi national, really looking forward to see uh, Roshan delivering. Um, I'm excited Can you tell us by a bit the concept. more about Roshan. So, what what is the project that Roshan is delivering? Yes. So, Roshan are a community developer uh, where they're developing um, residential communities on a massive scale uh, in different cities of the kingdom. They're going to roll it out with uh, Riyadh, and uh, yeah, as I just said a bit earlier, uh, pre-sales should be starting uh, soon. So, Roshan is anticipated to be the benchmark of quality uh, supply coming into the market. Um, Roshan is also anticipated to be priced uh, very competitively, so it will form a pressure on the market. Definitely, uh, it will move, or uh, you know, it will incentivize the private sector to follow suit and develop to the same standards uh, at reasonable uh, price levels. So, um, my gut feel, really, my uh, you know, I'm looking forward to see. Uh, Roshan delivering. I'm looking forward to see the uh, the communities that will be there. Uh, that will be the benchmark for future developments. Okay. So, uh, to, to, to uh, I, I just have a question well. on uh, uh, at what uh, I know that prices have not been uh, announced yet, but uh, can we expect Roshan to uh, to come in at a level that is, uh, let's say just above the million uh, per home is that let's say the starting rate that they let's say above that um uh, ministry of housing level or are we looking at 1.5 million and above or do you think they, they they can capture the gap between one million and one and a half million is that something they cater to well uh, it's going to be very tricky really to uh, to forecast that but yeah. um in the same time um i believe it will be at different price points really depending on the offering so I'm sure there will be multiple type of units uh, to choose from. And, you know, so you'll have different entry entry level prices. And um, what we understand is that those would be very competitively priced. Yeah. So it would be very tricky really to, to estimate at which yeah. price it would fall. Um, Harman, that's that's a really good point. I mean, uh, you know, we we are we are keeping tabs on a number of residential units announced, and so far we know that there's an excess of one million new uh, homes planned um, in the kingdom this decade. And you know, this is strongly suggesting that we are likely to see the emergence of an active second homes market, um, especially for housing located in some of the new entertainment-focused giga projects. Um, on the Red Sea coast or in, in Western Saudi, as you mentioned earlier. So what, what's your take um, on the outlook for the second homes market? I guess, you know, first of all, is there one and how important do we think this will be um, in the future? Yeah, I think that's uh, quite a new market for Saudi Arabia. I mean, I, I, I've been doing work in Saudi Arabia for, for quite some time now. And, and from my work back in the day in Jeddah, I know that uh, you know people in Riyadh would uh, had some appetite to buy a second home in Jeddah, but you know th th those projects were not built as second homes. You know they would just buy a sort of a nice condominium on on Jeddah's corniche, uh, let's say, uh, and and combine that and have a place to stay there during the holidays and and maybe on the way to Mecca, right? But uh, but uh, like a purpose-built second home community, uh, Talal needs to confirm that. But but I, I think that that's that that's quite new. And 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 a lot of the second homes were were, were of course bought by 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 the wealthier Saudis um, uh, abroad. Yeah, be that Dubai, uh, London. Um, so it's very interesting to see because now at the moment um, the Giga projects, especially in uh, the Red Sea project, Amala, and 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 even Kadia they're uh, they're quite they're going to be quite dependent on on second home sales and it's not just one project that is doing that there's a couple of projects and, and 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 you know a lot of stock becoming available and it would be interesting to see uh that shift for for the saudis are they now willing to to buy these homes in their own country uh you know are, 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 because they're also what i understand they're not going to be cheap either uh some of these homes are going to be quite expensive so it's really then an uh, you know uh the choice, okay, like uh, are, are we you know, buying in London, Dubai, or actually gonna buy something in Saudi Arabia? So that's that's what I've seen, and it's 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 something that is very new, and um, and maybe maybe Talal has a view on that, but but um, yeah. Well, as you, as you're saying, Carmen, really, um, it's gonna be something new um, to the market. At the same time, those developments are a game changer, really. 
uh, they're bringing an experience that was never available in the kingdom, an experience to international levels uh, that is uh, due to, to compete really with all the global benchmarks. So with the smooth delivery of those projects, uh, hopefully I, I do anticipate really second homes to become popular in there. Yeah. Uh, if they are delivered uh, to the standard that they are meant to be. Exactly. I think even uh, Faisal on one of our uh, consumer research uh, studies that we that we led, um, uh, I, I think there was some evidence uh, of, of people willing to buy uh, second homes in the country. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it uh, the appetite is there and, uh, you know, and then we'll see it in the next couple of years whether that's going to going to happen. Okay, that, that's a that's a fascinating point, uh, Howard Chance. It looks like we're, we're just about out of time. Um, so there you have it. The residential sector in the Gulf's largest economy looks set to go from strength to strength. An ambitious vision is driving the rebirth of a nation and residential property sits at the heart of the government's plans. So expect bigger, bolder and even more exciting residential developments to spring up around Saudi Arabia. Indeed, it looks like we are witnessing the creation of what could certainly be one of the world's hottest new residential markets. Join us again soon for the next episode of Your Property Pulse. But until then, thank you and ma'a salama.